Australia is battling against more extreme weather conditions, with agricultural output forecast to fall for 2023-24, according to a report by the Australian Bureau of Agricultural and Resource Economics and Sciences. So, how can we benefit from using Indigenous practices while still remaining respectful to our First Nations people? I work with the University of Queensland and Coffee, which is the Queensland Agricultural and uh, Forestry Industry a Research Area of UQ. And I've worked with them for a couple of years now, and they invited me as a traditional owner in southeast Queensland. A number of crops or fruits or grains that are already Australian native products that exist in a commercial sense, um, being sold and made in jams and other food products. So they're taking that existing list and then looking at you know what can fit within the definition of an agricultural crop, um, which is very different to the way that we as Indigenous people do things. We look at country in terms of a food forest garden. So we're not about monoculture, even though that's shifting to meet commercial demand and domestic tastes and international preferences around Australian native foods. But that when people have lived with an environment like Australia, have learned around what is beneficial in its plants and its animals, they develop a science that is unique to and designed for the country and the vegetation. And that information is really important with understanding how do we get the highest value of nutritional value in a fruit if it's vitamin C or the antioxidants or the antimicrobial benefits. And what's not often understood is that the way that Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people have managed the country and managed those plants has actually contributed to these high levels of vitamins or minerals that we're finding. And one of those that are really popular, Kakadupa, what most Australians probably don't appreciate is that they're grown in two places in the whole of Australia. And these large orchards um, that are wild harvested are wild harvest, harvested by communities that have taken care of that country and it is their country. But the largest growers are, are non-Indigenous growers. Um, and one of the impediments and obstruction to Indigenous communities in this industry to, become, to be growers on a larger scale is land. They don't have access to their own land. Um, or if they have access to land, which is government owned, there's a lot of blue, there's a lot of red tape that they have to go through to be able to do that. So we've got some really well known, but there's now only an appreciation about what's coming out of our country. Uh, what does our country have? Um, and our Indigenous communities are now leading the way and have in fact led the way the entire time. It's exciting, it's exciting for Australia. It would be desirable to see in Australia over time an increase of our own strain native foods in our diet, in our shops, that it's as normal to us as it would be going to buy, you know, the key ingredients of a Thai recipe. Uh, at the moment, native foods in Australia is a boutique niche industry, and we're slowly we've got to move that forward. But at the same time, we've got to meet our social obligations, and we've also got to make sure that we support Indigenous communities so that they can retain their cultural obligations. And I think we will be a healthier, stronger Australia for that.